Hey guys, welcome to the Simplify Your Life podcast. It's Coach Simona and I'm glad you decided to tune in. What's up everyone? Today's podcast episode is going to be a little bit different. We all know the current situation and I hope everyone is doing okay. And although I'm not a medical professional, I'd like to take a second and share with you the most reputable source when it comes to gathering new information about the virus. The World Health Organization, also known as WHO. Please stay alert, not anxious. Now, in this podcast episode, we're going to talk about how to stop worrying about health anxiety. And I will share with you 7 tips that will help you calm down and stop obsessing over your health. Now, let's jump right into it. Alright guys, before we get into the first tip, let's take a closer look at where health anxiety actually comes from. Health anxiety, also known as hypochondria, is when you spend so much time worrying that you're ill or about to get ill, that it starts to get over your life. Well, there is some evidence that health anxiety, like all anxiety disorders, may in part be inherited or biologically based problem. It is generally accepted that several other important factors can increase the likelihood of you developing the problem such as negative health experiences, death of a loved one, or someone really close to you experiencing serious illness, or you have experienced a medical problem yourself. Now that we know where health anxiety comes from, let's get into my first tip. Slow down. Anxiety is directly linked to nervousness. Our bodies are in fight-or-flight response, so it's important to activate the parasympathetic nervous system to slow down, become calmer, and manage our health anxiety. When you're worrying about your health, you're constantly checking your symptoms, analyzing all the sensations in your body and trying to figure out what's wrong with you. And of course, playing out the worst case scenarios in your mind. There are several ways you can slow down, but the fastest one is to take 10 deep breaths, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Another breathing exercise that I recommend is the 478 method, which goes like this. Breathing quietly through the nose for 4 seconds. Hold the breath for a count of 7 seconds. And then exhale through the mouth for 8 seconds. You can repeat the cycle up to 4 times. Having a daily meditation practice is essential if you want to keep your health anxiety in check. There are many guided meditations you can find on YouTube. I've already made 3 of them for you guys, so I will link them below. I also recommend giving my favorite meditation app a try, Headspace. They have a variety of packs to choose from and I've been using them every single day for over 5 years, so I highly recommend them. And if you want to check out my best grounding exercises for anxiety, listen to episode 71 next. The next breathing technique I recommend is by Wim Hof. I will link it below. I've been practicing it daily for a few weeks now. And I not only feel a lot calmer, but also my immune system has strengthened a lot. Which actually leads me to my next tip. Strengthen your immune system. Instead of worrying about health and the potential circumstances that will lead to bad outcomes, we can focus on the things that we can control. One of them is how we treat our bodies. Again, I'm not a doctor, so I won't recommend anything that isn't natural or can interfere with your health. In addition to the Wim Hof breathing technique, I recommend taking a good look at your diet and making some changes. We all know that eating vegetables and fruit is important, but I want to introduce you to a few immune boosters that helped me a lot. Lemon water, echinacea, turmeric, green tea, and ginger. Look them up and try them out to see which one works for you. But from my own experience, they help a lot. In addition to eating a balanced and healthy diet, it's extremely important to sleep at least 7-8 to hours per night. I used to neglect my sleep so much that when I look back, I can see why I had panic attacks and struggled with general anxiety for years. Getting enough sleep doesn't only come down to setting aside enough time to sleep. For many of us who struggle with health anxiety, nightmares are something that's pretty common. If you haven't listened to episode 29 on how to go back to sleep after a nightmare, I will link it below. Now let's get into my third tip. Move your body. Before you click off this episode thinking that I'll be preaching about going to the gym, hear me out. You don't need to exercise every day. And right now, it's even better if you could exercise from home to minimize the risk of getting sick. 
There are many practices when it comes to moving your body, and many of them don't include exercise. You can do yoga or dance to your favorite song. You can even choose different things from a different day depending on your mood. The important thing is to realize that you're not moving your body as a punishment. You're doing it because you love your body and you want to keep it healthy and happy. My fourth tip is to pay close attention to your thoughts. Anxiety is your body's response to negative thoughts that have accumulated over time. If you don't pay attention to your thoughts, you may get swept by the constant negative inner narrative. Having health anxiety means that your body perceives danger when no danger is present. One of the most effective tools I use with my clients as a cognitive behavioral therapy practitioner is the automatic thought record tool. You can download it for free by clicking the first link in the description box below or visiting bit.ly slash thought record tool. This tool helps you track your negative thoughts and substitute them with healthier alternatives. It helps you rewire your brain and you become more self-aware as a result. Tip number five is to tune into your body. Having health anxiety means you're obsessed with your thoughts and you live in this prison of worst-case scenarios you've created for yourself. The only way to break free is to tune in and start listening to what your body is saying. We've all heard about the mind-body connection. This means that our thoughts, feelings, beliefs and attitudes can positively or negatively affect our biological functioning. When it comes to chronic pain or illness, or if you have a specific part of your body that keeps aching, I advise you to spend some time alone and stay with your feelings. You may have deep hurt or anger that needs to come out, or maybe there is some grief lingering in the background that you haven't yet addressed. I've read some great books on the mind-body connection. I will link them below. Tip number six is to have a gratitude practice. The opposite of fear is love. If there is one thing that I want you to take away from this podcast episode, please let it be this. If you have any type of anxiety, that means that you're living your life in fear. So you need a little love to balance it out. One of the most powerful ways to shift your mindset from fear to love is by expressing gratitude for the things you already have in your life. It's impossible to be scared and grateful at the same time. So every moment of every day, you have a choice. You can worry about what the future might bring, or you can be mindful of the present moment and see all the good things that you already have in your life. If you're breathing, that's something to be grateful for. If you can see, that's another one. We often neglect the simplest things in life, and we focus on these great, big, grandiose things that would supposedly bring us happiness and fulfillment. The truth is, I call this podcast Simplify Your Life for a reason. I think that we're overcomplicating things. We're always trying to go somewhere, do more, achieve more. At the end of the day, if you don't spend enough time celebrating your wins, what is the point of anything? Having a gratitude practice can be as simple as writing down three things that you're grateful for every single day. It can be also noticing the beautiful things around you. It can be calling someone you love and being genuinely open to hearing what they have to say. Gratitude comes in many shapes and forms and it's the antidote to fear. If you haven't tried the 5-minute journal, I will link it below. It's a game changer. Your mind is keeping you stuck. It wants you to stay safe. That's why it's sending you all those signals that you're in danger. But you're not. You're safe. You're loved. And there's so much to be grateful for. My seventh tip is to let it go. We are all here on this earth for a very limited time. Instead of constantly worrying about when we're gonna die, we can make the most out of the time we still have. Letting go doesn't mean giving up. It means surrendering to things that you can't control. We can't predict when we're going to leave this earth, but we can definitely control our attitude. Every day, there are hundreds of choices you make, and each one of them matters. Making better choices will lead to better outcomes. Take good care of your mind and body, and have a spiritual practice such as meditation or practicing gratitude. This will be more than enough to look back one day at your life and say to yourself, I lived my life fully and wholeheartedly. Now I want to hear from you. How do you calm down and deal with health anxiety? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please like it and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on my weekly podcast episodes. 
Next week's episode is going to be a very special one, so make sure to come back on Tuesday. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you in the next one.